excited to be joined by Mr. Wood Alberts today to share your knowledge and love for brewing. So let's dive in, shall we, Wood? Absolutely. Let's do it. So tell me, what inspired you to start UBB? Okay, so this is this is key, right? It's the first time over all of these years and building companies that we all the whole team has found a way to blend drinking with technology. <laughs> That's, I love to hear that. <laughs> that's part of it, obviously, but it really is uh, identifying a market niche that we think is really an exciting niche that has been missed in the brewing and distillation world. And 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 frankly, it's just a lot of fun. We've, we've had a lot of fun dealing with what we're doing and creating the first automated brewer uh, with a turnkey solution to the marketplace. So that that's what inspired us to to build this. I've got a partner in Thailand that made an introduction to me uh, or introduced me to the opportunity who had worked with the one of the inventors of the original technology. And we've taken it light years beyond the original technology and created really the first automated brewer the, that is in the marketplace at, um, at all. We kind of call it where tradition meets technology. I love that, where tradition meets technology. So UBB, you're not a brewery. You create the equipment for world-class brewing beer, world-class beer. Yeah, that's that's a great point. You know, we we struggled over initially in the first part of uh, building our, our, uh, our website because we had the full name Unique Bavarian Brewery out there. And we realized that a lot of our traffic that we got from our website was really from people that were looking to go to a brewery. And in reality, what we've done is created equipment that actually fits into any F&B venue uh, so that anybody that chose to or wanted to, even without experience, uh, could actually brew a very, very high quality beer. I love that. And what do you think right now is the mission, your goal for UBB? What is the mission of UBB? Uh, you know, that's that's really it uh, in a nutshell is it would to, to build the first automated turnkey brewery and distillation process in the marketplace and to build it in a global platform, which is something um, that we're all excited about because of the way that we can go to market uh, with uh, uh, equipment resellers that actually go right into our customer base, we think that we can scale very quickly and go into the global market. We we also anticipate, and you'll get a kick out of this, is you know drinking is worldwide, so UBB will be as well. Can't wait for that day. Right. <laughs> so you just mentioned a little bit about the equipment, right? So yes. tell me more about these products, these equipment. You said craft beers, and then you also mentioned distillations for spirits. Yeah. Great point. Thanks for asking that question. Uh, you know, what, what UBB calls our technology and our process is from the water to the lips. So anything that has to do with being able to provide uh, a great craft brew or a distillation product, and maybe in the future, even winemaking. Uh, that's what we are uh, focused on building uh, and building a technology platform that pulls data all the way across that process. So our, our product development roadmap actually has the brewing system for brewing cat craft beer, uh, distillation, um, in the commercial marketplace uh, for brewing spirits as well. That'll be the second launch, or the third launch, actually. Our, our commercial brewing system will then go into the home brewing market. Our distillation unit will go into the home distilling market. And anything that is required for that full automation, including ingredients, including training, including um, uh, warranties, including maintenance on the equipment. That's all what UBV will be providing to our customers so that they have the option to brew very, very high quality adult beverages uh, without having any experience at all. We'll be the, we'll be the brewmaster. We'll be the master distiller for them with the recipes that we create. And they can then brand name their 
beverages on site to their marketplace. So basically, a business owner can contact UVB. You're able to provide them with the equipment, the ingredients, the recipes to create some delicious craft beers of their own, rather than using the store branded beers. Exactly right. Exactly right. It, the, the competition. The competition today is, you know, ordering up a craft beer from a distributor, which has. Uh, more expensive margins, which is really the key play that I'm sure we'll talk about later on. Um, but th then they then they are stuck with the distributor, where we will give them the opportunity to create ex um, variety every brew. Uh, we're a small batch brewery, um, or our equipment is small batch. It's 200 liters, which is about 424 pint, pints. Excuse me, and that that allows that every time the venue brews a beer you can switch varieties up you can switch the styles up from an amber to a wheat to a lager to a porter to an ipa so you can have flexibility um, right there at the venue rather than ordering from a distributor and and paying their higher margins to provide that to for them and then you know then they don't get the option to make that those types of selections if their distributor doesn't have that type of beer available same thing with distilling when we get into the distilling process as well. So small business owners, so just anyone, any of your customers are able to create their own craft version. Because I know before the webinar started, you and I, we were discussing about creating a craft beer for my wedding. So yes, stuff like that. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. And, and uh, one, of the, one of the questions that we talked about is who does that customer really look like? And it's been kind of interesting. I mean, we've been at this for three years and we're ready to launch uh, in September, actually, in the commercial side of the marketplace. And what's been interesting is when we first came to market, we anticipated that where we were going to sell is the sports bar and tap houses. My, found, my, um, my partner in Thailand, one of the other founders, uh, built the largest tap house in Southeast Asia called Kraft in Bangkok, Thailand. And as a venue owner, he recognized the need for this type of niche play so that they could create the variety. And so we've kind of spun off on that piece that originally for sports bars and tap houses. But as we've been doing our market research and talking to potential customers across the, the globe, really, because we, we have a footprint in Asia right now. We have a footprint in North America. We have a footprint in Canada right now. What we're finding is, is that it's not only the tap houses and the uh, uh, sports bars, but any F&B venue that wants to uh, be innovative and craft a beer to manage their, to manage their, their menu, um, anything that um, any other venues like a country club, golf course, event center, uh, anything that has weddings, birthday parties, uh, anniversaries, uh, a, a big big sports facilities um, for their luxury boxes. You could do a, a, a branded beer for a special event at a luxury box. Casinos, uh, all-encompassing resorts that are looking for a way to increase their margin by the one-stop shop price that they give at a, at a resort, uh, cruise lines, uh, government facilities that that actually produce, you know, like a officers NCO club or something of that nature. Um, we we've just kind of the you know I hate to use the old Jackie Gleason uh, phrase, but the world is kind of our oyster because nothing in the marketplace actually fits these places to one, increase your margin, and two, to increase the quality of delivery of product that you have on your venue site. I would agree. And you basically went through that entire customer demographic, your customer profile, and it's it seems countless. And would you agree with that it is because of the value proposition UBB offers, the fact you are able to provide that equipment, the ingredients, the recipes to all these customers of different areas, to create their own craft beer and possibly spirits in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's really the value proposition 
uh, for our customers. That uh, and the plain fact it's kind of cool to brew your own beer or to, or to distill, right? I mean, and and you don't have to be an expert at it um, because we've really taken the old traditional Bavarian brewing process and automated it so it, in a consistent manner that the end product is a very high quality product. And from that basis of the Bavarian tradition, then we can actually spin off and make many other types of, of beer styles as well. I'm going to, I'm going to agree with you. The fact it is very cool to be yes. able to <laughs> brew your own craft beer earlier before I was thinking to myself, when you said winery, you know, making your own wine was in the horizon for you, BB. that really, you should see my eyes. It, it lit up like Christmas. <laughs> but since we're on the subject of beers, let's talk about, have you tasted these craft beers? And if so, what are, the, what are some types of craft beers UBB equipment has created so far? So the, the craft beers that have been brewed over the, the original versions that are being created, we're just in the process of finalizing our last prototype. Um, and brewing those in small batch right now, but they're lagers, ambers, IPAs, wheat, porters. Um, it, it really, it's anything that from, if you start from a traditional base of a beer, um, we can produce, we anticipate that we will probably have anywhere between 500 and 1,000 recipes that can be brewed on site. And the one thing that's really unique about what we're doing is that we're going to provide whole grain ingredients to the customer based on a production roadmap for them. So let's assume that a customer wants to plan out for a year and wants to plan out for a seasonal beer during Oktoberfest or a wheat beer in summer, or they want to plan out based on their menu and try to pair to a menu. We can plan out for six months, a year, or even a year and a half. And, and plan out what ingredients they would need at what time so that they can properly brew and then actually serve the, the beer at the time that they want to do it. And that's a, that full production roadmap is really kind of unique. Uh, I, I know the big breweries do it, um, uh, but they're doing it specifically to their batches where we would do it specifically to the customer's need and provide those, those whole grain, high quality ingredients there's no not going to be any extracts whatsoever in our ingredients, so that that adds to the 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 nuance of of high quality, and it also allows us to guarantee the outcome for the beer at the end at the end, and that's key for us. Obviously, we can't afford to have bad product at the end, so we're doing about four different things that make a lot of sense to us. One is identify the water. Two is replicate the process. Three is provide high quality ingredients. Um, and four is to provide the recipes that are proven out in our lab time and time again to produce a high quality so that when it's transferred to the customer's prem, they can have a very high confidence level of a high quality beer. That's great. And with, when it comes to the ingredients, the customers can continue to come to UBB? Yes. Absolutely, continue to come to us. We uh, um, actually, that's part of the whole package is a, is a turnkey package to it. And that's the way we get, guarantee the quality and the flavor of the beers that they select to brew. Now, let's say, and this is out of curiosity for me, they're not happy with the taste of the craft beer, they all, the recipe they already picked. Are you guys flexible enough to change it? Maybe, you know, make some adjustments for the, the type of craft beer, the recipe? Yeah, well, so we will have a lot of different types of recipes uh, that they can choose from, but we will also give the operator, the venue operator, the opportunity at some point, if they request something specific that our recipes don't fit to, is that we'll actually go and create that recipe, prove it out in the laboratory and give it back to them. We don't want them to try it um, on their own because the outcome is not guaranteed. So what we want them to do is to give us suggestions that says, okay, I want a little, uh, let's say orange in this wheat beer. And I want something that gives that orange flavor. And we don't have a recipe that actually ties to that. 
we would go out and actually define that recipe, replicate it in our labs, and then provide it back out to the whole customer base, let alone to that one customer that might want to change. Wow. So this just goes beyond just the equipment. But this whole model you have put together is a full service package. Yeah, absolutely. And it really has to be in order to guarantee the quality. But that's the fun part of it is we we want that package to be as simple as possible for the venue owner to produce high quality adult beverages. And the only way that we can do that is by replicating it in our lab and, and knowing exactly that we have a 99.5% confidence level that what we brew in our lab is replicated um, at the at the venue uh, owner's place so that their customers actually receive that high quality adult beverage as well. So we touched on this question all throughout our session today, but are there any other reasons a customer would want to use UBB products and services? Yeah, I, you know, there's uh, uh, two main ones that uh, uh, outside of, you know, being a cool factor, right? Um, the two main ones are really increased margins. We are our, our total cost of ownership model that we have produced that sits on our website today. Um, you can actually see um, the payback periods and the ability to increase your margins um, so that it really returns a significantly reasonable uh ROI back to the customer, purchasing the equipment, having the ingredients, using the space at the venue. Our machine is actually about a little smaller than the size of a large dining room table. So it can actually be placed in the kitchen, out in the out in the dining room. It's it's very cool looking product. I don't know if you've got a chance to see it, but it's very, very high tech looking. Um, and it's we're, we're building it with a shell of five and carver carbon um, and uh, it looks like a uh, a Mercedes Mercedes gull wing as it open up ups from the top with the gull wing motion uh, but it looks very high tech as well so that those are that's one reason or, or actually that's two increase in margin and the cool effect but really the the variety and the flexibility of the variety that you can actually choose on the, for the beers that you supply. Uh, that, that's a huge one. If you go to your local sports bar or, or tap house, you know, they, they, they have their distributors actually tell them the kind of varieties that they have and what they're willing to actually support them with because the distributors kind of have them a little bit by the tail where for us, it doesn't make any difference to us. Your, your variety is your variety. If we have a recipe that fits that uh, effectively, We'll, we'll use those recipes or create one. And all of a sudden they have a, a craft beer house right there at a very small tap house or, or sports bar menu. That's just, that's great. I feel like there's a lot of reasons for a customer to want UBB products and services. And you've thought about that when you really put so much energy and effort into the details of the model. Yes. Absolutely. It's been three years in the making where the team uh, is extremely proud of what we're going to deliver to the marketplace at this point. It's, uh, you know, you must be excited. Yeah, we're we're having fun with it for sure. I love that. Having fun. That's, yes. You can't not have fun when brewer, beers is involved, right? Right, exactly right. <laughs> So, well, and, and you know, the other thing that's kind of interesting from a customer's viewpoint is now all of a sudden they can market differently as well. Um, they can market to their customers and have specialty monthly deals. And even, you know, we talked about it at a country club, but even a sports bar with a, uh, a the regular customers, every month they could actually, you know, have auction off or uh, or raffle off who gets to choose a style of beer and it can be called, you know, Nathan's Lager, right? And uh, Nathan wins it and it can be called Nathan's Lager and it's served all month long at the tap house. There's so many cool things that you could do from a marketing perspective that is also very, very effective for, for the venue owner. That's giving me ideas now. <laughs> giving me ideas. <laughs> so you need to come join our team. <laughs> Oh, what you are so funny. Um, 
So you talk, we, we're talking a lot about beers. I'm sure some of our attendees today must be wondering, do you have any manufacturing facilities? And do you have any plans for future brewery, brewery sites? Because I'm very curious to know that myself. You know, that's a really great question. So, you know, the pandemic has taught all of us a lot, right? Um, every Everybody, one, we've learned how to work out of our homes. That's one, right? Um, and two, we've certainly learned a lot about Zoom. Uh, but really what we've learned over the manufacturing side here is that we want to be flexible enough to be able to manage around the supply chain. We have our research uh, facility and our manufacturing today um, actually in Thailand for pure cost. But what the way that we've designed it is that the manufacturing occurs so that it's we have the flexibility to assemble anywhere in the in the world. Um, if the supply chain uh, gets shut down, then we have the ability to open up an assembly plant in the US or Europe or Southeast Asia or uh, Australia, anything that's really close to the customer. Because our manufacturing pieces, there's only about five pieces that we can manu that we manufacture that are a specialty manufacturer piece for us and part of our IP that we've we, we've actually filed in about 158 countries across the world as of today on utility design, uh, function, and uh, uh, software. Because one of the key pieces of everything that we're doing is the technology play in the software. So what we've, what we've been able to design is having flexibility to manufacture originally out of, out of Thailand. If we keep it there, we keep it there. But if we struggle with anything for delivery across the globe, we can pick up and move those assets and assembly any place in the, in the country. And all the parts in the manufacturing can be done in that, in those areas of the, of the globe. So, uh, you know, we plan to be across the globe. So when we open up that, but we anticipate that we will have assembly manufacture or distribution plants in the U S Europe, Asia, and Australia at this point, at this point. The world really is your oyster. Yes. That, that's yeah, impressive, really 158 is. countries. So what about the brewery sites? A tasting lab, anything in the future? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we get that question all the time, yeah. So we, we're going to have, we'll probably have a tasting lab in Thailand, uh, laboratory there, and also in the Denver, Colorado area, which is where uh, we're based out of here. Um, or part of part of the UBB team is is based out of here, and we will be doing tastings. Yes, but we've chosen that we're not going to sell our beer because that's our customer's job is to sell their beer, not our beer. But we will have tasting labs, and I'm I'm sure we'll have lines around the block for that free offering. I am sure too. What about New Jersey? Are you planning on the East Coast? A tasting lab. Let me know. Oh goodness sake! Now you're putting pressure on me, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, 158 countries. Might as well start with East you know, Coast. You know, we can we can more than likely uh, get a team of tasters um, in New Jersey that we can ship to very quickly and and have you guys taste as well. Now. That's I'm going to hold you to it, Wood. I'm going to hold it. you to it. And I'm sure our attendees are going to hold you to it, too. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so let's pivot a little. We okay. have been talking about the customers. Let's talk about the investors. UBB is a growing business. You guys are excited to really expand, get into the market coming this September. What are the key elements you think an investor might consider when choosing to invest in UBB? Uh, that uh, also another great question. Um, we we uh, our expected ROIs are really because we can create a global platform and and scale um, extremely quickly. Um, we know this is a market niche. I, I suspect that most people recognize that as they listen to the plan and the strategy and the rollout function that we have uh, to actually capture the marketplace. We don't have to build a uh, global sales force. There is an existing F&B event center uh, equipment reseller network across the globe. 
and we can go directly to them to to expand our reach. So really, it's all about the delivery and execution of the equipment and the quality of the ingredients to our customers. So our our global platform to scale is is exciting uh, in its own. Our ROIs that we anticipate on our on the investment um, all the way from the seed round that we've finished up into this round and going are are significantly better than the marketplace. Um, and the reason why we feel really confident about that is that the the we only have to penetrate in the commercial market less than one percent of the marketplace. So for us to be able to be successful, um, well, that's that's all we have to do. And I and I and I shake, you know, I shrug my shoulders and just kind of say, yeah, that's all we have to do. We still have to execute. I'm not saying that we don't have to execute because that's why we have the experience team that we've put together was for our ability to execute. But we our penetration is only one percent of the market in the commercial and in the uh, in the home market, the B two C. Um, we, we are actually less than 3% of the marketplace there. And we're going after the very, very high-end marketplace in the, in, the home, in the home market. So our, our success rate at hitting those targets are much higher than most other companies when they're trying to penetrate a marketplace. The, um, the experience team is another reason why you'd want to do it. We're, we're we're a bunch of folks that have, uh, you know, not only do we have industry experience, but we also have uh, experience at the executive level for building companies. And, you know, we've got all the scars to prove it, the successes to prove it. Um, and so the team is that we've actually put together and built around this is, is exceptional. Um, and the, the last thing is, frankly, as much as we've looked at this in the marketplace for the last three years, we're really the first company um, that is addressing this market at a full turnkey solution, which we think is absolutely important for, for the market to be successful. And uh, so if we can execute, we're going to hit the market effectively. Um, we roll out in North America, then go to Europe and Asia and other countries across the uh, across the globe in places that are actually further behind in the craft brewing industry and the distillation or uh, and should I say on prem manufacturing of those in in the rest of the world. It's kind of a growing market. To frankly. We know the maturity level, all of us know the maturity level of the craft brewing market in the U.S. Um, the rest of the world is a little bit behind it, but they are even farther behind it when you start talking about uh, on-prem manufacturing. And so as we hit that marketplace out there with a very effective high technology support mechanism for the high quality adult beverages to our customers, uh, we we expect success to come reasonably rapidly. Fantastic. And since we are on the topic of investors, is anyone able to invest in with UBB? Yes, absolutely. Matter of fact, obviously, um, we have about 30% of our investors, maybe even 40% of our investors have actually used Madison as a platform to invest through their IRA. So yeah, anybody that's a qualified investor has the ability to invest in UBB today. At some point, we'll get into the institutional players um, that might limit the capabilities, but that's, that's a couple of uh, uh, raises out. So yeah, anybody that has an interest, I'd love to talk to them, show them what, what, how, we're, how we're doing it, what are the returns, what are our commitments. Um, it, yeah, it, uh, it's pretty well open at this time to uh, um, an accredited investor at this point. Perfect. And with, since you mentioned it, that investors have utilized Madison Trust to invest with UBB, I have to mention we are passive custodians. We do not provide any tax, yes. legal, or financial advice. But if anyone is interested in setting up investing using Madison Trust IRAs, feel free to reach out, right? Absolutely right. I mean, you guys have been wonderful to work with. Uh, you support the the client experience and or investor experience for us. And you guys have been great to work with um, uh, from a company level as well. That's music to my ears, Wood. And with that note, 
We are hitting our almost nearing the end of our time. Let's see if you have any questions from the audience. Melanie, how are we doing? Yes. So uh, anyone in the chat, you can feel free to uh, you know write your questions in the Q&A section. While that gets going, we did have a couple of questions that were emailed into us. So um, apologies if you already answered it, but why not go over it again? Absolutely. What makes UBV stand out from other companies? Well, the first place, there aren't any other companies doing what we're doing. That's the first one. Uh, the second place is that the technology platform and the full turnkey service is really uh, what stands out. Uh, there are plenty of, of craft breweries or microbrewers in, in the world. Everybody knows of them from a tap house perspective. But most of, most of uh, the customers that we're going after are customers that don't even realize that they have the ability to, to brew their own beer. We've always said you, you make your own uh, meals, you cook your own food, why don't you brew your own beer? Or that likewise, as we get into the distilling market, the same thing. Um, so today we don't really have uh, another marketplace other than the fact that we have, or a competitive marketplace, other than that we have uh, folks that concentrate on craft uh, are dis distributing or brewing craft beer and they'll distribute it, but they don't, they don't pair it to a specific menu or a full experience across the table um, to their customers. And, and, and again, one of the other things that happens in the craft brewing industry is that it takes them because they have to do trial and error on their recipes. It'll take them six months to a year to actually develop a new recipe. And they'll they'll be doing that um, in, with their own time and equipment. And uh, we're the ones that are gonna test the ingredients so that by the time it gets to the customer, they'll have a very solid, high quality beverage to serve. Amazing. We have a Christopher Williams who asked, why brewing systems? Why that industry? Why a brewing system? Yeah. <laughs> Well, that, that's a good question. I, um, you, you know, it, it really, the, the system is, has been created so that the, tech, you know, the technology takes over for the master brewer. And, and, and to be honest with you, we actually originally thought that we would get pushback from the brewing industry. We actually found out that the brewing industry is actually looking for automation today. Um, we've actually kind of coined ourselves into the marketplace as our vertical as hospitality technology. And in reality, you've seen McDonald's produce or go after a, a production line, uh, an automated production line. You see it across all venues, actually, to create an automated production line so that they can, uh, one, limit labor and two, have consistent labor and quality across the table. Well, we actually originally thought that master brewers were going to push back on us and say, no, you're taking away our art. And in reality, we found completely the opposite. The, the master brewers in the world today are looking for a way to develop and create their recipes with technology and automation because, and, and I, I'm going to say this loud and proud, the, the, the art of the brew is in the recipe. It's not in the process. The art of the brew is in the recipe. And so if we provide the recipe and we automate the process, then that's why we're building the equipment. We want everybody, uh, our customer base, and, and again, at a one less than 1% penetration, it, it'll be a small customer base in relationship to the total marketplace. But it'll be, um, uh, it, it will actually be something that they'll, they'll want to do and they'll be proud of being able to serve uh, at their venues. Perfect. Um, we have another question from Melissa Lesky. Do customers have to provide you with any specific paperwork or type of license to get these systems installed? Well, that, you know, that's a that's a great question. Yes. Um, so, in in the process of of bringing um, the unit to to the venue, we do have. I think I talked about it earlier. We have a production model that talks about you know how many taps that you have. Uh, what styles do you want? Um, how much volume do you create? 
um, and sell on a monthly basis. Um, so we do go through all of that nuance to understand, um, you know, th does it actually fit? Are you going to get a, a return on investment uh, to at, at your facility? The other thing that we do is to identify the space. There is a, there is some uh, additional space requirements, but it's very small. But we need to make sure that that's available so that we can brew and we can ferment and age uh, in the in the facility and store the inventory. Um, but the latter part of that question was about um, the licensing criteria. Every state has its own manufacturing on-prem license criteria. Um, in the U.S., it's, it's really relatively mature, um, and it's not very expensive, to be honest with you. Um, but you do have to do go through maybe a 90 or 120-day process because you you have to acquire the federal liquor license to produce or manufacture on prem. You have to create the local license, um, and then you have to create the retail license. Also, um, in most cases, it's going to be well under a thousand dollars to do that. Uh, but uh, you do have to do that. There is some step. There are some steps. Excuse me. That you do have to produce. Uh, that the venue operator does have to produce. Now, UBB will assist in that process, uh, help you define that and walk you through that process across the, uh, across the, uh, uh, the state that you're going to do it in or the country as we roll out to other countries. We'll, we'll, we're going to embed that kind of knowledge um, on what kind of criteria that each state and local local municipality requires and we will help the customer through that process perfect and we have an anonymous question that says ideally how many different types of beer would you recommend having on a menu no oh, that's a great question <laughs> the so um it uh, really it it it's established by the venue what does the venue want to do right um, we, we, you know, our recommendation is it would be uh, we want you to serve uh, this beer or your your craft beer on every tap and generate the margin levels that you want. But we also know that customers that come to a sports bar or a tap house have a flavor palette for, um, you know, a fat tire ale. Um, and they expect that on the tap. So we know customers, unless you can replace that with a customer, which is a, it's a, is a potential to do, um, you still have to you'll still have to provide specific uh, styles of beer or or call a beer like a fat tire or um, maybe a, a a a blue moon wheat or something of that nature, and you'll have to actually have that for your existing customer base. So it's going to be actually. Um, recommend will recommend based on what your customer base is, what your menu is, and and how many taps you have, and then you can massage it from there, uh, from that from that standard about how successful those beers will be. And as you change the style, we'll have the ability to give you the data on how quickly things move. Uh, what types of beers were more effective in your facility? You'll you'll see all of that because we have all of the the data on the brewing and the ingredients and how often you would have brewed a specific style. So the customers will see all of that. But really, to answer that question is it's not a standard response. It's going to be a response specific, custom, customized to that venue. Amazing. Okay, we are nearing the end of the webinar, so we'll end on this question. Someone says, "What is your all-time favorite type of beer?" That's a good question. <laughs> you know what? That's that. The over the years, the older I get, I I go to the spirits a little more just for the <laughs> carbohydrate content. But uh, my my favorite is, is Guinness. I'm a big heavy beer drinker, so uh, the 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 porters are always my favorite. It's like drinking dessert to me. <laughs> well, that's a good answer. That is a good answer. <laughs> All right. I think we're nearing the end. I just want to open the floor. If Donna or Wood, you want to add any last thing before we close out? Um, one, one of the thoughts that we had talked about, and this is actually 
a little bit more on the investor play is, you know, what does success look like for UBB? Um, and we kind of have a, a four-pronged vision of that. One is we want to create careers uh, for our employees with the, uh, across the globe. We think we've got a wonderful plan and strategy to do that. Um, two is to, to affect our customer on-prem and their employees. They can learn more. Uh, the, the venue creates more profitability. They're going to create a higher quality product. We, we anticipate that our, that our adult beverages are going to be higher quality because we're going to prove it out in the lab. Um, and the other piece is the, what the biggest success is going to, what we really wanted to build is a $500 million company. We think we can do that inside of six years. And, and we think we can do it because of the reseller platform and because of our penetration levels inside the marketplace. They're very small. Uh, so we can successfully create that kind of business. And it's a full turnkey solution. So there's a lot of recurring revenue that exists in that model. It's not just let's buy a piece of equipment. Ingredients, warranty, maintenance, uh, all of the support is uh, at a higher level. Um, and it's a recurring uh, revenue model that can continue on just past purchasing of the equipment. So that that's really kind of what success looks like for UBB for us. Good, you stole the question right out of me. I was going to ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> we two great minds think alike. Donna. Great minds, good, great <laughs> minds. But it has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you on one of my favorite topics. So yes. thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for the invite. We uh, UBB as a, as a team really appreciates the opportunity to speak to you and to the your customer base and. Uh, excited to to get out in the marketplace and thanks for the opportunity to share our story it's fun for us absolutely well thank you donna and thank you wood and a huge thank you to everybody who joined our webinar and we hope to see you guys at the next one